Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Welcome to the channel. I have another conference for my sisters out there. Um, I want to talk to you all a little bit about, um, <laughs> how can I put it? Um, when, <clears throat> okay, you guys out there, you may be dating somebody or you may not be dating, you know, I don't know. You know, none of my business, but I'm just saying for those of you that, you know, you may be acquainted with someone. You may be thinking about accepting somebody's proposal. You know, some of you out there have been proposed to. Um, but what do you do if, <clears throat> okay, let's just say that you all have uh, met someone and you've gotten engaged, okay? And you found out that, you know, your fiancé has been less than truthful with you, okay? And let's just say he has side pieces, or whatever. Um, what do you do when the side pieces think that they are in the same category as you? And <laughs> now you've got these busted, ugly, tore up, tacky dressing, poorly groomed whores walking around out here on this earth with their eyes locked on you. <laughs> see, in their minds, they think that, uh, well, first of all, they see you as competition and they know they can't compete. And then they know that, uh, you know, you're better than them. You know, you're much better than them. They know that you all are not in the same category. You're not in the same class of people, you know. And this is not about money. And one thing I want people to do is differentiate between class and money. Class and money have nothing to do with each other. They, you know, no association at all. Money is a man-made um, thing, you know, to purchase goods, okay? And if you have more money, you can purchase more goods, and if you have less money, then you will quite naturally purchase less goods. But it does not define who you are as people. But um, when you're dealing with somebody that, uh, you know, they are not in your class, meaning character, lifestyle, or anything of that nature. And some of you ladies out there might be dealing with them. Some of you ladies out there may have been cheated on by your husbands or your boyfriends. And uh, when you see what they cheated on you with, God knows, you know. <laughs> Let me tell you something. A man can have a beautiful wife, but he will cheat on his wife with a scrub. He can have a beautiful girlfriend. He will cheat on his girlfriend with a scrub. My sisters, let me tell you something. The other woman, nine times out of ten, maybe not always, will always be something that... Um, We'll just say it looks like something that he drug out of the alley, okay? Um, especially for you married ladies out there, you know. And uh, your husbands are judging you because you've had, you know, a couple of babies. And maybe you don't have the figures that you used to have. And maybe due to just staying up all night with children, maybe your countenances are not as um, firm as they used to be. Because, you know, when you don't get your proper sleep, your face can't bounce back into its original shape. So, you know, and, but it will, you know, I'm sure after you guys, your children get up some size and you're able to rest. But I'm just talking about, especially for um, women that may have, you know, little ones and you may have more than one, you know, it's like uh, your husbands or your boyfriends may judge you. Don't let them do that to you all. You know, when a man tries to come down on how you look, tell him about how he looks. I mean, well, come on now, you know, I mean, you got your opinion of him as well, right? Okay. And then you got your facts about yourself. Okay. All right, tell them what it is. I would say, I shouldn't tell you guys that, but I'm not trying to cause any trouble. But I'm just saying, I wouldn't let no man down talk me because he would definitely get down talk back, right on back, just like that, straight like that. But anyway, uh, what do you do when, you know, you, you, <laughs> you know, there are these females out here and they're walking around and um, they're looking at you like they think they're the stuff. You know why they think they're the stuff? Because that man has sweet talked them. And sweet talk them right on out of their panties. If they even wear them. You know, I mean, come on, we're not even going to go there. I should just say underwear. Because a lot of them probably don't even wear underwear. But anyway, whatever. 
But I'm just saying, a man has sweet taught them. And so they've caught their legs. And a lot of women take that as flattery. Oh, you know, they'll think, oh, he must think I'm beautiful. Or he told me I was the best and this and that and the third. Well, you know, a man will tell a woman whatever she wants to hear when he is horny. And he don't care how funky her crouch is. He don't care <laughs> what other man just left it as long as he can get off and relieve himself. Okay. So, you know, so what you got is, you know, a lot of men just telling women what they want to hear to get what they want. You know, and, you know, that's old news. You know, we, you know, those of us from the old school, we, we always knew that, you know, a man will tell you what he, what you want, what he feels a woman wants to hear to get her, talk her out of her clothes, you know, and then when he's done, he's gone to the next female until he's ready to come back and, you know, relieve himself on her again, you know, or in her or whatever. I don't know. I mean, these people, you never know nowadays what people are doing. Who cares? That's just disgusting. But anyway, um, you know, and so it kind of boosts up these types of females' self-esteem that he might say, oh, he finds her sexy or, you know, maybe he might tell her her sex is good or that she's the best that he ever had or tell her that she's beautiful. Let me tell you something. A man will tell a woman, as we all know, ladies, my sisters, whatever he feels <laughs> she wants to hear to get between her legs. And, you know... Um, it's just sad that we live in this kind of world. And then, you know, um, a lot of females who do not have it going on, they will take that kind of talk and they will try to process it. And so now that's that's got them thinking, oh, well, you know, I've got a big butt and I've got this. And he told me I was the best he ever had. And, that, and now they're walking around thinking they're the stuff looking like a ragamuffin. Looking like a rag, a mu looking like a straight up rag, straight up hag. Don't look like nothing, dress like nothing, uneducated to the max, if, if that's the definition to use. Just totally uneducated. No class, no sophistication, no swag, no nothing. Just a rag with a hole that, you know, not only that man has been up in, but, you know, all the other men that's paying these whores, you know. So what do you do when you've got those types of females you know, parading around you guys and they think that they can compete with you. My God. Mm -mm -mm. Help me, Lord. Help them. That's what I should be saying. You know, my sisters, you know what it is. You know what it is with yourselves. Whether if you're married, you're single, you're in a relationship or not. And one thing, I, I, you know, what I mean by that is you know what it is. You know that those are low-grade whores. And you know that next to you, they do not compare and cannot compete. You know, there's no competition, you know, with, with you guys, you know. Um, but, you know, a lot of times, these types of females will get it into their minds to think that they are more than what they are because their low self-esteem has been taken up a notch by some man telling them lies and flattering them just to get out of them what he wants, you know. And, uh, you know, it's just, it's just sad that we live in this type of a world, you know, where a man can just tell a woman that who is a low grade female and she just automatically believes him. And then she starts strutting around the high value women, you know, like she thinks she's the stuff. I'm thinking you're the piece of trash. You know, you're not his wife. You're not his girl. You're not his woman. And even if, if you ladies are not his girl or his wife or his woman, you know, she's not you. Oh, my gosh. Really? You know. So, I think that, you know, you all need to really just see the truth for what it is. And a lot of women don't, you know, because they run off of how men treat them, how a man make them feel. You know, but you got to, you know, really just take charge of your own lives and stop allowing these men to make you all feel a certain type of way based off of how you're being treated. Now, I know anybody can adopt a certain type of feeling based off of how somebody else is treating them. But I'm telling you, you've got to really just treat yourself well first. And then when something comes into your element that is contrary to your own behavior towards yourselves, you're like, wait a minute, hold up, Joker, hold up. You know, I know you're not going to try to compare me to that. 
I know you, you're you not going to try to stand somebody of my statue and my status up to something like that. You know, you got to put people in their places, uh, ladies. You know, you got you to gotta let them know. No, you know, yes, you know, you are female and they are a female, but mm -mm, that's a low grade female. You know, you're, you're a high grade female. You, you know, you can't. Don't don't allow these men to treat you like that. That's that that would be somebody who has absolutely too much power over your lives. You don't ever give somebody more power over you than you have over yourselves. As a matter of fact, you don't give people power over you at all. Power belongs to God Almighty. But oftentimes, when women fall in love, you know they give their power away. And by that I mean, when you fall in love with somebody, you automatically give them your power. You don't do it deliberately, but you have automatically given them your power because falling in love requires vulnerability. It requires you making yourselves vulnerable. Your hearts are open. You know, it's open to another person, another individual, and that person can now hurt you. You understand? So I feel like anybody that can hurt you in that way, and we all know a man can, that person has your power and they know they have your power. Okay, ladies? And that's why, you know, there's so many women out here that are probably, I'm sure, not not probably, you know, they are, they're distraught, you know. And um, I just want to encourage you ladies out there that uh, when you feel like you've given your power away in your marriages and your relationships and your engagements and things, you can always get your power back, okay? You can always just take it back. But it will not be overnight. It will be a process, okay? Um, that's just the way that Father God created the woman. But not only that, but, you know, men are the same way. When men um, meet the woman and, you know, they get married or whatever, they give their power to their wives if they love her. You know, a lot of people are married and don't even love each other. They're not even, they're not even in love. They've never been in love. It was like they got married for financial reasons, you know. So don't let these people fool you, especially these that walk around out here and they think that they have all these material things. And, you know, they may have a nice house and a nice car, but there's no love in the situation. You know, and then oftentimes you see those types, they'll try to look down on somebody else because they'll say, oh, well, you don't have the type of house I have. You don't have the type of car that I have. And, and I, I, you know what I would tell them? Yeah. And I don't have the type of jacked up, loveless relationship you got either. OK, so add that to the list. OK, among other things, negative in your lives, you know, no, I, I'm not walking around with the black eyes. No, I'm not walking around um, walking around with my husband calling me bees and hoes. No. Mm -mm. And so, you know, you just really got to, you know, call people out and see people for who and what they really are. People are just full of a bunch of crap a lot of times. Okay. So anyway, you know, you just don't give somebody else your power. And uh, if you have, um, just um, take it back, take it back, you know, and men do the same thing as I was saying, I think originally, um, they give their power away to their wives or the women that they love or, in, or, or or are in love with because, you know, if somebody has the power to hurt you as far as relation, as it pertains to relationships, you know, that's who you've given your power to. You, did, you didn't do it deliberately, but you gave because, you know, the heart gives. The heart gives and the heart receives. So it's give and take. And that's how God Almighty created the heart. You know, that's why you have to give your hearts to God. OK, because he gave his heart to you. OK, and that's the reason why nobody, no man, no woman, nothing can come before God almighty. Because, see, when they walk away, Jesus Christ is still standing there. Jesus, to me, I feel like he serves as a buffer in relationships, in marriages, in unions. So that if one day that person wakes up and says, I no longer love you. I want out of this. You will be hurt, but you won't be all that hurt because when they walk away, there is one that said, I'll stay. Okay, and with that said, God bless you all until next time. Bye-bye.